In the Land of the Free marks the debut short story by Edith Maud Eaton, a British-Canadian author of British and Chinese heritage. As one of the early Asian North American writers, Eaton's literary works delve into themes of racial discrimination, the challenges of assimilation, and the impact of the legal system on immigration and familial ties. Originally published in the Montreal Daily Witness in 1890, In the Land of the Free primarily explores the latter theme, focusing on a Chinese immigrant family torn apart by the complexities of the immigration process. Through her story, Eaton prompts readers to question the extent of the freedom promised by life in America and sheds light on the unequal access to the privileges of citizenship. The narrative unfolds with La Chu, the mother of the family, and her young son, referred to as Little One, nearing the port of San Francisco aboard a ship. They are returning from China, where Little One was born, to reunite with his father. La Chu excitedly tells her son that they are approaching the land where his father is working hard to secure their prosperous future. She assures Little One that his father will be overjoyed to meet him for the first time. Meanwhile, Hom Hing, La Chu's husband and Little One's father, waits anxiously at the wharf for their ship to dock. Unfortunately, his reunion is delayed as he encounters officials adorned with the initials U.S.C. on their caps. Upon finally boarding the ship and meeting his son, Hom Hing faces a series of interrogations from the customs officers. They inquire about Little One's birthplace and whether he has visited America before. Disappointingly, the officials inform Hom Hing that due to the absence of any documentation regarding his son on either his or his wife's papers, they cannot grant him entry into the country. Hom Hing explains to the customs officers that he is a merchant who has resided and worked in the United States for a considerable period. When he learned of his wife's pregnancy, he sent her back to China so their child could be born in their homeland. However, his wife was detained for 20 months while taking care of their elderly relatives and has only recently been able to return to the United States. Despite acknowledging Hom Hing's account, the customs officers assert that they must take custody of little one. Lachu intervenes and tries to resist, but the officers convince Hom Hing to assure his wife that their son will be returned to them soon, until tomorrow's sun rises. Reluctantly, Lachu agrees to hand over their son. The following morning, Lachu wakes up and immediately urges Hom Hing to go and retrieve their son. Hom Hing insists that it is too early and not yet the time for their son to be returned. Lachu feels disheartened, but Hom Hing comforts her, assuring her that there is no law that can keep a child from his mother. Lachu occupies herself by unpacking and tidying their apartment. While standing on the balcony, she observes the Chinatown neighborhood below and notices their former neighbor, Ki Ho, along with her young son, who has grown from a baby to a little boy. Determined to remain optimistic, Lachu chuckles to herself, holding the belief that her son will come back home. As the day progresses from morning to afternoon without any news, Lachu grows increasingly anxious. Hom Hing returns to the apartment and informs her that the customs officials have requested him to call again tomorrow. Crestfallen, Lachu sinks to the floor. In the subsequent section of the story, some time has elapsed since the previous events, as Eaton notes that the winter rains were over, the spring had come to California. Despite the passage of time, Hom Hing and La Chu remain unaware of when they will be able to reunite with their son. They have only received updates stating that he is being cared for by compassionate white women in a mission, and that he is happy and healthy. One day, a young white man named James Clancy excitedly delivers a letter to Hom Hing regarding their son. However, Hom Hing's response lacks the same level of enthusiasm. He explains to Clancy that it is the same letter they have received repeatedly, Clancy becomes frustrated with the unfairness of the situation and secretly glances at Hom Hing before proposing to go to Washington to advocate for their cause and retrieve their son. Hom Hing eagerly accepts Clancy's offer and calls his wife downstairs to share the news. Lachu expresses her gratitude for Clancy's willingness to help. Clancy then explains that he will require funds to finance his trip to Washington, at least $500. Hom Hing informs his wife that they will need to pay, which angers her. She tells him, you are not 100 man good, you just common white man. As negotiations become strained, Clancy starts to leave, but Lachu relents. Desperate to be reunited with her son, she hands Clancy her gold bracelet and starts to remove her many rings. 
However, Hom Hing intervenes, insisting that she keep one ring as a symbol of the gift he gave her before their son's birth. Clancy experiences a pang of guilt upon accepting the pile of jewels, but La Chu and Hom Hing insist that he sell them to finance his journey. Clancy pockets the jewelry and departs. In the story's final scene, the narrator reveals that ten months have passed since little one was taken from his parents. Hom Hing and La Chu have finally received a letter stating that they will be reunited with their son. La Chu is led by one of the white female caretakers at the missionary orphanage. The caretaker informs her that little one, now named Kim, brings joy and delight to all the children at the mission. La Chu is asked to patiently wait as her son is being brought to her, and every passing moment feels unbearably long. Eventually, the white woman returns, accompanied by little one. La Chu's heart fills with joy, and she calls out to her son with excitement. However, instead of rushing into her arms, Little One retreats in fear and attempts to hide behind the white woman's skirt. The story concludes with Little One emphatically telling his mother to go away, rejecting her presence. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.